Welcome to St. Clement's Episcopal Church, located in St. Paul, Minnesota, currently scattered around the state during this time of physical distancing. We are so glad that you here, are here to join us as we celebrate the Liturgy of the Word using the elections assigned for Proper 18A. It's my privilege today to welcome the Reverend Bob Shoemake as our guest preacher, and also to welcome each and every one of you to this service in which we are bound together by the power of the Spirit. We will begin our service with a proclamation of the values of St. Clements. Airplane. This is God's table. All are welcome, all are needed. Our presence, our stories, our true selves are welcome here. We see each other with a grateful and open heart. Together, we are the body of Christ. St. Clements is fortunate to have a body that includes the littlest people and our elders. It is a body made complete by our participation and we welcome you all, however you are and wherever you are. Perhaps with the noise of children or dogs in the background, a reminder of the fullness of life in which we are all participate in, even in these times. So as we mark the space as a space and a place for praise of God, take a moment to acknowledge God's presence wherever you are. Join us in saying, God is welcome here. 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 Our service continues with the opening salutation. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. We continue with our song of praise. All the ways of God are justice. Please join in singing as you wish. We'll be singing verses one and four. All the ways of God are justice. God stands not unfeeling by. But God hears the trampled people, hears the world's bewildered cry. Greatly moved and greatly troubled, not far off but gently near. God, the God of all compassion, speaks and waits for us to hear. May we glory not in wisdom, may we glory not in wealth, but in living lives of mercy, loving neighbor as oneself. May God's teaching drop as rainfall. May God's speech drop down as dew. Filling us with loving kindness. Making us and all things new. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O oh Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Ezekiel. You, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. 
whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 119, which we will read alternately. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go on the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Our second reading today comes from the book of Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us lay, down, lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and in licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn appointed for today is hymn number 380 the old 100th, verses one and three. Praise our eyes. Let 
Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures, The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Good morning, friends. Welcome. I think like every preacher who preaches from the lectionary when it's time to preach, we begin by looking at the texts. In my case, almost always the gospel to see what kind of resonance there is there for the week ahead. As I looked at the lessons for today, it's COVID time, and somehow I couldn't see a sermon on um, conflict resolution in Christian communities as especially helpful for us right now. And Ezekiel didn't do it. So I turned to our old buddy Paul and the letter to the Romans. And words that sound really familiar. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Paul the Pharisee, well-trained in Torah, knew these words, the ten words they're called, the commandments, the ten commandments, the ten words. And he says, these ten words are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, I can work with that. It's a text that we know from the Hebrew Bible, we know from the rabbinic tradition, we know from the Gospels. In fact, in Luke's Gospel, the question about who is my neighbor becomes the setup for the story of the Good Samaritan. 
The problem with familiar texts is what else is there to say? So I did what is my custom during COVID time. I went for a walk. I love my neighborhood. I love to walk. And these last few days especially have been lovely and great walking weather. And so I headed out. My neighborhood happens to be full the sidewalks, uh, the children paint, uh, draw with chalk, all kinds of wonderful things. And in their yards, people have signs, all kinds of signs. Black Lives Matter, justice for George Floyd. We can do it. Stay strong, stay safe, stay home. Thank a frontline worker. All are welcome here. Somebody who read this text, love your neighbor, your black, brown, immigrant, disabled, religiously different, LGBTQ, fully human neighbor. And I'm going to apologize right now. Because while I was walking, what was going on in my head was an earworm. And you can imagine what it is. It was the Beatles, All You Need Is Love. All you need is love, yeah, da, da, da. all you need is love, all you need is love, I just wouldn't leave my brain. And I came to a yard, the only yard in the neighborhood with this sign that said, all you need is love and action, empathy, determination, compassion, tenacity, faith, hope, knowledge, resistance. Oh, that'll preach. Because what that sign underscores is that love is an action verb. Not a feeling. It is a feeling, but it's not just a feeling. It's an action verb that demands of us. Loving our neighbor demands of us. And I started to think about the interviews I had seen most recently with the late John Lewis, the great civil rights leader and congressman who talked about the kind of training that would happen before one of the uh, uh, witnesses that they would do. He was involved in Nashville in the lunch counter sit-ins. And before they had a sit-in, they had weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks of nonviolent training to put nonviolent love into action. What happens when you're sitting there? They all wore their Sunday best. And you're sitting there and somebody pours a cup of coffee on your head. Or they start beating you. Do you fight back? What do you do? What does nonviolent love in action demand? And how do we learn to do it? And it took practice, and it took practice, and it took practice. In his case, he was almost killed at the Edmund Pettus Bridge on what was called Bloody Sunday. A lot of it was his blood. He took it to Congress. Not an easy place to work. People on both sides of the aisle could be real pains to work with. And yet he always consistently was asking the question about what does love demand of us in this situation? What does love in action look like here? Love your neighbor. Even these people? In my party, he's a jerk. In the other party, she's a jerk. Are they my neighbor? Do I have to love? Yes. It's our vocation. It's, as Paul says, it's our obligation. So this week I was listening to a book reading by a friend of mine from my Atlanta days, the Reverend Nancy Hastings Sehested. The book is called Mark for Life, A Prison Chaplain's Story. 
Nancy's a Baptist minister, and she was a prison chaplain for 13 years. A woman, a woman, not a big woman either, a woman chaplain in a male prison in North Carolina. The book is full of stories. And one of the stories that she told really grabbed me because I was noodling this sermon. And she was in her office one day and choir was getting ready to, choir practice was getting ready to end. And she heard, why are you even here? You don't belong in the choir. You can't sing. She knew trouble was at hand. She grabbed the phone, called for security. By the time security got there, the fight had started. They quickly separated the combatants, handcuffed them, everybody else scurried away. She went back to her office. She was shaking, the adrenaline was rushing through her and she was trying to just settle herself down. And she reached into her desk and did a little self-care where she had a stash of M&Ms. And the lieutenant who was in charge of the security group came in, just walked into her office, no hello, no anything. And he looked at her and he said, you don't like it, but you need me. And I don't like it, but I need you. She's like, yes, Lieutenant, I know I need you. I need, I depend on you and your officers for the safety and security of this floor. I know I need you, but what do you need me for? He says, I need you to keep me from using undue force. I need you to teach me another kind of force. Another kind of force. We know that force. That's the force that we carry and we are called to live. Owe no one anything except to love one another. All the commandments are summed up in this. Love your neighbor as yourself. Another kind of force. All you need is love. And action. Empathy. Determination. Compassion. Tenacity. Faith. Hope, knowledge, resistance, mercy. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in God. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in God. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. God of salvation, who sent your Son to seek out and save what is lost, Hear our prayers on behalf of those who are lost in our day, receiving these petitions and thanksgivings with your unending compassion. Giver of all good gifts, awaken us daily to our dependence upon your generosity and make us always thankful for the abundance of your blessings. God, giver of life, hear our prayer. Joy of human hearts, heal our human communities, especially those where your word is not heard or where neglect, violence, 
greed and warfare increase the suffering and need of people and other creatures. God, giver of life. Hear our prayer. Comforter of all the earth. Sustain the people of this congregation who desire or need your presence and help, especially those who are lonely, afraid, sick, grieving, or suffering financial hardship. God, giver of life. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Rock and refuge of all creation. Receive into everlasting mercy all those who have done. God, giver of life. Hear our prayer. At this time, I bid your thanksgiving for Sally, Allison, Leona, Bob Shoemake, Bob Gopal, Mark, and Pixie, who are leading our time of worship today. I bid your prayers for teachers, students, administrators, families, as they begin the distance learning and hybrid learning that is being offered this year for grace and forbearance and for their strength, endurance, and courage. I bid your prayers for the people of Kenosha and for Jacob Blake, a victim of police violence. I bid your prayers for all children who are witnesses to violence. I lift up prayers for all of those who have used inflammatory speech in order to perpetuate violence to their own ends. And I pray for peace, but not the peace of oppression, but the true peace that will be born of our labor for justice and equity. I bid healing prayers for Mary Fred and for Monica. And I bid your prayers for the Ellis family as they mourn Kenny, a child of their family. May they know God's presence as they mourn and may Kenny be ever at peace within God's all embracing love. Redeeming Sustainer, visit your people and pour out your strength and courage upon us, that we may hurry to make you welcome, not only in our concern for others, but by serving them generously and faithfully in your name. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praise into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and one another. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world that you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, 
that we may abide in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. Please and take a moment to text or make a note of somebody in the community who you wish to share God's peace with. Even though we are physically far apart, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keeps us knit close together. Now that said, walk in love as Christ loves all of us.
life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. May the blessing of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, God and Mother of us all, be upon you this day and always. Amen. And now, dear friends, go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in Christ's presence, as Christ goes with you always. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us today, wherever you are and however you are. Please know that you are part of this body. And if you are new to St. Clements, please send me an email. Let me know who you are and we can connect. My email is revjoy at stcstp.email. Also, if you'd like to share images for our slides, you can send those to my email as well. I give thanks for Mary Fred Watkins who offered today's photos. Through the month of September, we are continuing with in-person evening prayer on the green of St. Clements. That is a masked and distanced offering as we try our best to offer something where people can feel safe. So once again, that's 7 p.m. through September for evening prayer. And if you'd like to join in for morning prayer, that is at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays as well. So 8 p.m. That would be 8 a.m. morning prayer and 7 p.m. evening prayers. Once again, 8 a.m. morning prayer and 7 p.m. evening prayer on Wednesdays. Next week, we'll start live recording these services on Sunday mornings at 1030. So please come and join us on Zoom. The link for that service will be in this week's e-chimes. So please take note. That link will be in this week's e-chimes and also up here on our website. So once again, that's 1030 for live online worship. That's preceded by Children's Chapel at 10 a.m. So 10 a.m. Children's Chapel and 1030 live online worship. There is also an opportunity to gather for stories and prayers at 4 p.m. on the green of St. Clements that day. And that's when families with children and youth can pick up their faith at home kits. Now, all of that said, yes, it's getting close to the program year's beginning, so there's lots to say. But all of that said, take a moment to extinguish any candles you've lit. And remember that nothing can extinguish the light of Christ. So go forth and shine. <laughs>